Recording. Okay, you guys, so I am going to, I just wanted to kind of cover some things about attracting our dream coach. And it kind of ties along. If you guys were on the upgraded call on Monday night, it kind of ties along with that. You know, Nicolette talked a lot about onboarding and how you onboard new coaches, but I want to talk about how you actually find those coaches and how you actually find people that are like you, find people that you want on your team, you know? And so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen really quick. So I did make slides, you guys. This is my first time ever making slides, and I was kind of impressed by myself. Um, <laughs> So uh, now I can't remember how to share my screen. Oh, there it is. <laughs> okay, so share screen. There we go. Can you guys see all those, see what's up on my screen right now? Don't mind all the tabs that are open on the top of my browser. <laughs> yeah, we can see it. Okay, perfect. Okay, you guys, so attracting our dream coach. I'm gonna make this bigger. Okay. Attracting your dream coach. So this is really, this is really crucial, you guys, for, um, you know, obviously building your business. I'm going to just minimize it because I can't. There we go. Um, this is really crucial for building your business. You guys, obviously, we're all here. And if you guys don't mind muting yourself, I forgot to mute everybody. Just make sure you guys are muted. Um, this is really crucial, you guys, for building your business. Obviously, we're all here as coaches because we want to be successful. Um, we want, let's be honest, we really want to help people. But honestly, the income is a benefit. We want to be successful financially. We want to build our team for growth, for not only team growth, but financial growth and just everything growth. So there's so many aspects to coaching that are just so amazing and we have to just know how to build our team and how to find that success that we crave. So attracting your dream coach. Now the goal of this call, this whatever you wanna call it, basically is to help you build a confidence in this business and yourself so that you can effectively share it and build a team. So, you know, we have to find the confidence in what we're doing in order for us to attract our people. If we want to attract people like us and who we relate with and who are going to be just rock star coaches on our team, then we have to find the confidence in our business. We have to find the confidence and believe in ourselves enough to actually share about it, to actually, um, you know, create really relevant posts on our social media and actually build our team. So, that's my goal for you tonight and hopefully you know you guys walk away from this call really just being more inspired to actually grow your team not only just onboarding challengers and hitting success club which is super important as a coach but now you know we have to find those coaches so okay so there are four ingredients in building a successful business and i think number one First and foremost is you have to believe in what you're doing. Like I kind of mentioned, you have to believe in the product, you have to believe in the business, and you have to believe in yourself. And if you don't believe, if you don't have a strong belief in all of those three things, you guys, you probably are not going to be very motivated. You're probably going to attract maybe the wrong people that you're not going to be able to relate with. And, you know, you are not going to be able to um, portray your business, portray what you're looking for if you don't have a strong belief and a strong confidence in your business and yourself and the products that you use. So that's number one. And then number two, you have to have a strong reason why you want to build this business. I'm going to go in these a little bit deeper as we go on, but why did you decide to become a coach? You have to really have a strong why. If you don't, it's easy to kind of just want to give up. It's easy to give, want to give up when things get hard, when you can't find those challengers, when you can't find those coaches. And if you don't go back to why you, you actually signed up as a coach, it's just, it's easier just to quit. Right. And we don't want that. <laughs> we, we started this business. We signed up as a coach for one reason or another, we all had a reason. We all had a why. So always remember that. And then you have to have a strong commitment to your business. You have to have a strong commitment to being successful. If you're not 100% committed 
and you're kind of just like, well, maybe this will work. Maybe this won't. I don't know. If you're kind of wishy-washy, your business is going to be wishy-washy. You're going to find those people that aren't 100% in it. You're gonna find those people that are kind of like the, where you're at, like kind of okay if it works or not, whatever. But if you have a strong book commitment to what you're doing, um, to your even to everything, your workouts, your Shakeology, this business, to posting, to really staying consistent. If you don't have a strong commitment to all those things, then you won't find those people who will have a strong commitment that want to join your team. And then lastly, you must remain coachable. You have to constantly be learning new things. For example, social media changes all the time. The algorithms change all the time. You know, when I first started coaching, we were supposed to post three to five times a day on Facebook. That blew my mind and it was really hard. Um, and now they're saying like only one to two times a day. So, so you have to kind of change with how things are changing. You have to remain coachable. You have to go find the resources that you think will help your business grow. Don't rely on your upline only to give you training and to give things to you. You are the CEO of your business. This is your company and you have to make an effort to go find the resources that you think will help grow your business and grow you as a person. So those are probably the four key ingredients that I believe is crucial for building your successful business. Okay, so going into this a little bit more, you have to have a strong belief in the product and the company. So what I, I encourage you to do, you guys, is to take a pen and paper, take notes for this, you guys, take a pen and paper, and I want you to write down everything that you believe the products are doing for you. And think outside the box. You know, for me, like I just wrote this out really quick. For me, the products, I finally found something that worked, right? I used to be, not very many people know this, but I used to be an Herbalife distributor. Um, I would go, I would just read all these South Beach diet books and I was always looking for the new thing, the new fat. And nothing ever worked because it wasn't a lifestyle for me. I could not keep it up. And so for me, the products here, they're finally something that works for me. Um, I get to work out at home with Beachbody On Demand. I don't have to have a gym membership. I don't have to drive anywhere with my kids. Um, Shakeology, I have the worst, I have the biggest sweet tooth ever. And so Shakeology has helped me with that. So that is the main thing that Shakeology helps me with. Um, I get to work out with my kids and everything is simplified and planned out. So that's for me, those are like the bonuses of all the products about Beachbody. So I want to encourage you to take some time, pen and paper, write just products. What are they doing for you? What are you, what are the benefits that you're seeing in your life? And think outside the box. Don't just think like, okay, well, yeah, yeah. Think about like weight loss and Maybe you did all um, you lost 30 pounds or whatever. Think about those things that really had an impact on your life with um, doing beach body and all these products. Okay, and then, so not only are the, are the products something you have to think about and really hone in on, but also think about what, what drew you to beach body, the actual company. What, um, what makes this company unlike any other? What has changed your life by becoming a coach? So for me, I get to make my own schedule. I don't have to rely on anybody else's schedule. When I was a personal trainer, I worked long hours and I, my hours were my clients' hours. They weren't, I couldn't make my own schedule. I had to, you know, be available to, for when my clients were available. And that's, that was usually five in the morning and it was sucked. So I love that I can make my own schedule. I don't have to ask for vacation time. There's so many incentives to this business. I get to be home all day with my kids. Um, you know, the paychecks are a reflection of the number of people that I get to help. That's the number one thing I love because it's not just a paycheck. It's not just for standing around and doing whatever. It's actually, you know, reflects how many people that you touched, how many people that you have helped. Um, so I love that. And then, um, you know, the limitless potential in the business, you know, there's no cap on income. There's so many things that you can earn. There's so many amazing things. Um, and then I'm in the best shape of my life. Um, and it's a way to own my life and create what I want out of life. And that's why I love this company. So I encourage you again, take a pen and paper, write down the benefits and the incentives that you see in this company that you are, you know, 
what's going to drive you? What's going to keep you motivated? Write those things down. And when you get down in your business and when you're trying to find those people to join your team, you're going to remember, okay, this is why I love this company. And then craft posts according to why you love Beachbody. Craft posts on your social media according to why you love these products. What have they done for you? How can you share the business better? And people want to know, like, they don't, you're not necessarily want to sell products. They want to know why you like the product. They want to know why you joined Beachbody and why you're so passionate about this company. So, okay. And then obviously, you know, this is really important, you guys. You have to have a strong belief in yourself. You have to decide what you want out of this. This, your success is not going to come by just sitting around and hoping that things happen with Beachbody and coaching and you're just going to hope people join your team and hope that challengers sign up with you. Success begins with a decision. You have to make the decision to be successful, to do what it takes to see it through and never give up because you can do this and you have to believe that you can do this. You cannot be back and forth. You have to have that strong decision where you are determined to be successful. Like, it's just like when I first started as a coach, and I know Javen can relate to this, I was like, okay, what's the worst thing that can happen? I fail. Like, that's really the worst thing that can happen. What if, what's the worst thing that could happen when I send out an invite to somebody? They'll say no. Like, like, don't even think about, don't let things like that bring you down. Don't let things like that, you know, affect your work ethic affect how you push forward in this business. And then also remember you guys, and this was something that kind of stood out with, for me is remember that your posture and how you carry yourself is very important, even on your, in, in person and even on your social media, you know, you want to attract people. Like I said, to me, we're attracting people that you can relate to. So you want to, you know, assert yourself the way you would want to um, have somebody see you, you know, and your words and attitude either help or your prospect feel more confident or they'll plant seeds of doubt. So if they are sensing your lack of confidence, if they're sensing that you don't really know what you're doing, they're more likely to go find another coach. And that's just honest, you guys. That's just honest. So really be aware of how you're, how you're, um, what your presence is, I guess, on your social media. Be aware of how your posture is, even in person, if you're doing meetups or whatever. Um, you know, act professional. Act like you know what you're doing. And honestly, guys, that's gotten me through life, every single area. I mean, I got through college, BSing my way through college because I just faked it till I made it. And that's kind of how I approached coaching too. You have to find your thing. You know, I. I'm not telling you to be somebody else either. I'm telling you to be yourself and be confident in that. Don't try to be somebody else. When I also, I always try to give examples of when I first started coaching you guys because I really think that it's hard when you're looking at coaches that have been doing it for a while, they're like, oh my gosh, I just wish I was like her. She probably never struggled or anything and she probably was a successful coach right off the bat. No, we all start at the beginning, we all start as a coach who knows nothing about what we're doing. And so I highly encourage you, if you are, you know, stalking coaches, if you are following coaches and trying to be like other coaches in this business, it's not going to work because they already, they're already themselves. There's no Jenna out there. I'm Jenna. Like I have to be the person that I want to be the face of my business. You know, I'm not going to go try to be like Nicolette. I'm not going to go try to be like Melanie Metro. You know, it's, they're inspiring and I get inspired by them and, you know, it kind of pushes me and motivates me to keep pushing forward in my business, but I'm not going to try to do things like them because it's not me and people are going to come right through that and they're not going to, they're going to think, oh, she's kind of fake, you know? So keep that in mind, you guys. Um, and I come a lot. Oh, okay. Somebody all this stuff that's in my car. Hold on. No. Okay, so make sure everybody's muted. Um, okay, so anyways, moving on. Um, another thing that 
you know, I put this at the bottom. It says, invest in your personal growth. You are your greatest business asset. If there's anything that you can do to help grow your business is it, it's growing yourself, you guys. So personal development, always learning something new, always pushing out of your comfort zone and trying new things. Um, but really grow your person, grow and find out who you are. Because once you find that, and once you, you know, when you are constantly growing yourself and constantly learning new things, you're, you're molding yourself as a person. You are the face of your business. You are the CEO of your business and you are the greatest asset to your business. As coaches, we are a product of Beachbody. That's us, you know? So make sure, you know, personal development is crucial and I need, I am working on being better at that too. So, okay, you guys, oh, I don't know why that got all messed up. But anyways, okay, so having a strong why, and we all, we kind of talk about this a lot, you guys, and I kind of shared about it in the beginning, but again, I just want to emphasize why you did this, and again, I want to challenge you guys. I want you to get a pen and paper, put it in the notes in your phone. I don't care where you put it, but write down your why. Write down, like, what are you willing to make sacrifices on short-term that, that affect your long-term success? What are you willing to give up? Is it, maybe it's Netflix at night. Maybe you can work an extra hour of, your, hour of your business at night. Maybe you can wake up an extra hour early to really focus and hone in on either personal development, something to do with your business. So really focus on why you're here. Why are you sacrificing time maybe with your family for a little bit? Why are you sacrificing, you know, Netflix or your shows or whatever is your thing in order to be a successful coach? So keep those things in mind. And then, you know, just think about these questions when you're, when you're crafting your why, what is your long-term vision? What drives you? What will keep you going in the midst of speed bumps? Because let's be honest, you guys, as a coach, coaching is not easy. Okay. Coaching is very simple. It's very simple business, you know, but it's not an easy business. You're going to get people, you're going to get haters. You're going to get people that say no to you all the time. You're going to get people that judge you. You're going to get people that aren't going to support you. And that's going to be hard because, you know, it's, it's easy to get put down by that. And, um, me and Javen were talking about this the other day, but it's like, if we don't have haters, then we're not doing something right in the world, right? We have to have some haters in order to get in, in order to be big, right? So keep that in mind, craft your why, go back to it when you're having a struggle and always remember why you committed to this business. Okay, for some reason my slides got all messed up when I saved them, that's weird. Um, okay, so anyways, um, another thing I wanted to talk about you guys is your story. Everybody has a story and not everybody knows that they have a story yet. And so I like this saying, it says facts tell, but so stories sell. So you could talk about Beachbody and Shakeology and Beachbody On Demand and your workouts all day long, but unless somebody hears your story, why you're doing this, and you know, when you open up and be relatable about what you're doing and sharing your struggles, sharing your most vulnerable moments, sharing how you deal with emotional eating or whatever, you, you, it's just going to be harder to sell. So facts tell, story sell. Remember that, okay? Um, and then, you know, you want to get a clear vision of your story. We all have one. We do. We all have one. We just need to figure out how to tell it to inspire and be relatable. Then you will attract your people. I always think about this when I'm crafting a post, when I'm messaging somebody. What, are, what is that person on the other side seeing? You know, every once in a while, I go to my Facebook page and I just scroll my Facebook. Why do I do that? Not to, like be cocky and look at all my amazing posts. No, I do that because it's the storefront of my business. And if somebody, if I friend request somebody, if somebody comes across my page, I want them to know that I'm a positive person, that I'm a mom that just loves her kids. I love my business. I love health and fitness. I'm here to help you. And um, I want it to be an inspiring page, you know? So really think about what is going to attract those people that you want on your team. Okay. So crafting your story. So when I first started as a coach, you guys, I used to think my story was very boring. I didn't think I had a story. And when I was reading all about like, oh, you have to find your story. You have to, you have to share it. You have to be vulnerable. I didn't know how to do that. 
I just didn't think I was like that. I didn't think that was me. I didn't think I could ever go live on Facebook and talk about myself because it freaked me out. Um, and so I used to think my story was like, okay, I like to work out. I'm just a mom. I stay at home and I'm just living my life and I'm just trying to make it through every single day. Honestly, that's what I was going through. I couldn't get any deeper than that. And I was, I, I'm the type of person that stuffs my feelings and the type of person that doesn't like to open up and the type of person that shuts down easily. So for me, I'm a very simple thinker. Um, you know, if you ask my story back then, I, that's exactly probably what I would tell you. I love health and fitness. I'm a mom and I'm just living my life, hanging out with my kids, you know, but as I went on and as I really dug deeper into personal development and um, really, really honing in on why I'm here and what I want to accomplish in this, um, I, I started to find out who, the, who Jenna was and how I could actually tell my story in order to inspire those people that I want to relate with. So my real story is I'm a burnt out fitness professional and a mom who lost her purpose and was craving more out of life. I was craving something deeper out of life. I was an emotional eater who finally got a hold of my nutrition through joining as a coach. Um, I'm passionate about empowering women. I want to track those people that are passionate as well. Um, I always stressed about spending money that I didn't earn. You know, I was a stay at home mom. I wasn't in, I didn't earn any money, you know? So I was always stressed out about that. I always felt guilty about it. Um, and then I'm a recovering exercise and sugar addict. And a lot of people can relate to that because, um, you know, a lot of people are addicted to exercise because they eat bad. And so they turn to exercise or they're a sugar addict and they don't have to know how to cut cravings. That was me to a T. And there's a lot more to my story, but those are kind of the main points that I like to talk about because I want to attract those people, those women who are struggling with the same things that I did. So. So really hone into, on into your story, you guys. And I'm telling you what, when you start opening up and sharing these vulnerable things on your Facebook and a messenger through private message with people, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, she's a real person. She struggles with the same things I do. I like her. I can relate to her. I'm going to join her team because I want to inspire people like me who are like her, you know, so it trickles down. It trickles down, you guys. Um, okay. Moving on. And then this is just kind of some helpful questions, you guys, into crafting your story. Um, you know, think about your background, what you don't like about your background, and then how Beachbody and coaching came to the rescue and saved you from your background or whatever. And then, you know, how your results or how you um, and how your results from coaching or from a program um, has changed your life and how you feel about your future and where you're going with it. So, you know, asking yourself those things kind of helped you craft your story and really start to make you think about, you know, who, how you're going to inspire people and who you want to attract. Okay, you guys. So discovering your ideal coach and customer. Okay. So I put, I put some of my coaches up here because I love my coaches really a lot. I love all of you, but this is how, this is why I tell my story because I, um, you know, I want to attract people who I can relate to. So discovering your ideal coach and customer, that's driving me crazy. I can't believe that messed up. Okay. So your ideal coach and customer is someone who you, who you can directly relate to the version of you prior to discovering beach and coaching. That's who you want to attract. You want to attract the, the ones you know, usually that are struggling like you did and you want to give them light. You want to give them positivity and share how this has changed your life. Be specific. It's important you really narrow your ideal customer so that you can truly stop trying to sell and start inspiring and motivating people to take action through your story. Um, I tell, I always talk about this coaches. We don't sell, we don't sell a product. We are the product we share and, and are successful because we share our story and we share what works so and you know like all of you know like Natalie she is a young mom she has kids she's busy she loves health and fitness she wants to get her degree in uh, as a fitness instructor I can relate to her you know Danielle she is a busy mom of three she loves running she's so passionate about health and fitness she's a vegan she takes nutrition really seriously but she wasn't seeing results she doesn't know why it's because her nutrition was a little bit out of whack. Beachbody helped that. Larissa, 
you know, she's also a young mom, two twin boys, and you know, she works full time, but she's craving that time with her kids. She wants to be able to quit her full time job and stay home. I can relate to all of this, you know, so I love that. Okay. And then what I encourage you guys to do also, again, pen and paper. I want you to list out 10 characteristics of your ideal coach. And this really helps you guys when you are creating a post or when you're thinking and visualizing your ideal customer and your ideal coach. Now, some things that I thought of, you know, when I want people, the people that I want to join my team, I want them to be enthusiastic, fun, hardworking, dedicated, passionate, focused, driven, confident, motivated, and, and have an entrepreneurial, well, entrepreneurial <laughs> spirit about them. Um, so these are like the key words that I think are super crucial in a coach that I want on my team. Um, I put fun as number two because I am all about having fun and I'm not, I don't like to be stuck up or too serious about business. I like to keep the fun in it um, because that's just how I have always been in life. So, so I want, I encourage you to write out your words that you can relate to as far as who you want on your team. Okay. So some common types of posts that I make to find my coaches. So my these are the three that I thought of that were the most common types of posts that I make on my social media where I have found my ideal coach. Um, challenge group posts, okay? We invite to our challenge groups, right? A lot of my coaches come out of my challenge groups, okay? I think those are the, that's almost the best way because they already love the product. They already have seen results, hopefully, and you know they love Shakeology. So that's a really great way, you know, to find your ideal customer and your, or your ideal coach. And then through lifestyle, sharing my success in my, just my lifestyle posts, like how I was able to just go to the dentist the other day with my daughter and I brought her with me because I don't have to go to work and, you know, I didn't have to work. I could make my own schedule. Um, you know, that just popped in my head, but any sort of lifestyle posts, that shares my success, you know, obviously sharing about trips we earn, sharing about, you know, our success club prizes that we get every month for helping people. Sharing stuff like that is really motivating to people. They're like, oh my gosh, she earned that because she just did her job and she just connected people with what works in her health and fitness. That's totally cool. So that inspires people. And then another way that I have attracted coaches is through my coach mentorship program, the coach training that we do. You know, it's, um, I, a lot of times I'll create a post saying, you know, I've opened up my coach mentorship program. I'm accepting 10 ladies into it and it's filling up fast, blah, blah, blah. You, you can say whatever you want, but make a post, act like you are the leader. Who cares if you didn't create the training or whatever? I didn't create this training. Nicolette did, Ali did, you know, um, whoever, uh, Ash, Ashley, I think. Anyway, it doesn't matter, but I want you to own it. Like you created it, craft a post, like you own this training and make it seem like it is going to fill up fast because there are going to be a lot of people interested. That's what makes you look like, you know what you're doing, right? Okay. Fake it till you make it. That's my motto. All right. Um, and I kind of already covered this. It's amazing when your challengers love to become coaches because they're already in love with Beachbody. Um, people crave success. So sharing about how this opportunity is creating success for you, big or small, keep this in mind. You guys, you don't have to be making six figures a year in order to share your success. Maybe you earned $50 this month. Share about it. That covers like a new pair of jeans. I don't know. I don't shop anymore. So whatever, but share about the little successes you guys and that is what's gonna draw their attention. Don't think that you have to have some sort of all-inclusive trip you won or, you know, I earned, you know, $5,000 this month. It doesn't have to be like that. Share everything about what keeps you motivated to keep going in your business. And then like I already said about, you know, sharing about my coach member mentorship, um, you know, share about your goal too. Like I, I like to say, my goal is to help you create financial freedom while helping people, you know, so people know that, um, that's the whole goal of your mentorship program. Okay, so now you might have some people that are actually interested 
That's me and Jay, but aren't we cute? Okay, so you might have some people that are actually interested in what you're doing. Now what do you do? This is where I freaked out when I first started coaching too, because I was like, well, I don't know what I'm doing. And I have people asking me questions and maybe they're interested in joining my team, but I don't know how to talk to them. Okay, these are just some tips that I thought about that you know might help you, okay? So first of all, when you're talking about onboarding a challenger or a coach, either one, don't think about it as getting someone or roping them in, okay? A lot of times we get really excited when somebody comments interested on our posts, right? Or they say, hey, I have questions about coaching. What is this all about? And then we get super excited, right? Because somebody's actually interested in what we're doing. And it's exciting. But you have to kind of, for me anyways, I get so excited, I have to kind of take a breather, a step back, and really think about what I wanna to say to them and not come across as too excited, right? Too like over the top, too like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get them, I'm gonna rope them in. Um, so be careful of your wording, be careful of how you're approaching that person who might be interested in joining your team. Um, slow down, connect, and acknowledge them. Talk to them as a person. Think of it as somebody you know that you just went up to Target and they came up to you and said, oh my gosh, I love this. Where did you get this? You wouldn't say, oh my gosh, you did it. Da, 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 da. You know, like you just got to slow down and acknowledge the compliment, acknowledge that they're interested, acknowledge um, whatever. Just take time for them. Focus on building a genuine relationship. Okay, relationship is key in this business. No matter who you're talking to, no matter what you're talking about, focusing on building a genuine relationship is gonna get you far in this business. That's gonna build trust. That is going to help them see you as a real person and not just somebody out to get them or sell them something, okay? So keep that in mind. Form them and listen closely. People wanna be heard. They love to talk about themselves. So ask a ton of questions, ask about their goals, ask what interested them in this coaching opportunity, ask them things and get to know them. Think about how you want people to feel after talking with you. Like I said before, think of you, put yourself on the other side, put yourself in their shoes all the time. How would you want to be talked to? How would you feel if, if you said a certain thing? You know what I mean? So really take your time and um, listen to them. Take your time responding and put yourself in their position. Um, and then, yes, how would you want to be talked to? I just kind of covered that. So always think about that. Um, and like I said, it kind of at the beginning, if you're jumping straight into selling them something, take a break and then respond. Take a walk around your house and then respond, okay? So if somebody asks me, I am so interested in what you're doing, tell me all about it, how much does it cost? I do not say, oh my gosh, it's Beachbody On Demand, and I do a challenge group, and it's $160 to start, are you ready to sign up? Like that would be crazy, and that would probably turn some people away. If somebody said that to me, um, I mean, I'm kind of different, I'd probably be like, ah, yay, that sounds fun. But a lot of people are so scared of, of networking businesses because they don't want to be sold. They just want to be heard. They want something that works for them. So instead of jumping right into that, I would say something like, oh my gosh, I am so excited that you're interested in joining me and my team. I love your energy. What are some of your main health and fitness goals? What interests you the most in that coaching? What do you struggle with the most that you want to change? Start asking them some questions. And then just say, I would love to give you all the details and costs and everything, but I would love to get to know you first. They will appreciate that more than you just jumping into price and giving details. So, okay, so this little um, acronym I liked, it's called CUP, Connect, Uplift, and Praise. So whenever you're talking to somebody, CUP, all right? I like that. Okay, so signing up. Signing up a coach. So there's eight steps, I believe, that it takes to actually sign somebody up. So obviously you shared the business. Maybe you created a post on your social media talking about coaching, inviting them to the opportunity, to your training, whatever. So that's step number one, you shared the business. Yay, 
Maybe you did a live coaching event. That's always good too, you guys. Live coaching events work really well for me. I encourage you to do them on your own. Um, and then sec step number two, you wanna compliment them. So when you get behind the scenes in a conversation and they maybe saw your post about coaching, you and they, they said interested in your posts. You go behind the scenes and you say, oh my gosh, I am so excited that you're interested in this coaching and joining my team. I, like, like I said before, I love your energy or I love how organized you are or whatever. You might not even know them, but go on their Facebook profile and compliment them about something. They will appreciate that. And then, like I said, ask them questions. Um, you can have them fill out a coach application even from Google Forms or Wufu, whatever you like to use. That's always a helpful way to get them, to get to know them without asking them all the questions, like an interview. Um, just ask them to fill out a form. And then if they want even more information, you can always send them maybe a video. Um, you know, I have a video on my YouTube channel. Nicolette has a video of her life coaching um, events and stuff like that. So you can always feel free to share other coaches' videos that talk more about coaching if you don't have your own yet. Um, so that's a really great way if they ask for more information. Say, hey, girl, watch this video. It has a lot of stuff that covers everything. I want you to watch it, and then we'll connect. Um, and that leads me to the next one. Ask for a follow-up. This is something I'm trying to get better at, actually, because, you know, if you send them a video, and this has happened to me a lot, I've sent out my video so many times, and I'm just, like, sitting there waiting. Like, I just want to ask them if they've watched it yet and what questions they have. And I'm, like, at the edge of my seat waiting for them to respond to me and message me back because they're super excited like I am. But the thing is, they <laughs> usually are not. So ask for a follow-up. It's okay to be like, hey, I just sent you the video. Um, do you, when do you think you're going to have a chance to watch it? And then they'll be like, well, I could probably watch it tonight. And then I'll be like, okay, that's awesome. Is it okay if I follow up with you tomorrow morning so we can go over some questions you have? Ask for a follow-up. And they'll usually say like, oh, that's great. So then you can go tomorrow morning. You know that you have permission to message them and ask what they thought about the video. And then, um, you know, you can even get them on the phone or voice memo through Facebook Messenger. That has worked a really amazing. Um, I've gotten on the phone, phone calls used to freak me out, you guys, okay? I used to be, like, I hate phone calls. I hate talking on the phone. Um, but I have learned that people like to connect by talking on the phone. And I usually do FaceTime if I can. Um, I've done it with a few people that I've just never even met before. Like actually today I had a FaceTime call with um, a free Beachbody lead that went into my account and she was asking me all these questions and I didn't even know she was my coach or I was her coach. It was really embarrassing. Um, but I was like, and she's like, let's just get on the phone. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, that's a great idea. Anyways, the more you do it, the more confident you'll be and people like to connect with you face to face. Okay. Um, and then you always want to address fears or objections. Like even ask them, like, what kind of fears do you have about this business? Or what do you think is, will? what's the one thing that you think will hold you back from achieving everything that you have to give to this opportunity? Ask them, address it, um, and then sign them up. Okay, after all that, you should be able to sign them up. I hope this is helping you guys. Um, and I'm almost done, I promise. Okay, so how to handle objections. And this is a big one. Because we all face objections, like Shakeology costs too much. I don't have enough money, right? That's like the main objection that we probably all get. So this is how I, I just came across this um, watching um, a webinar preparing for this call tonight. And this is really good. It's really simple, but it's just really good to remember. Feel, felt, found. So when they give you an objection, Say something like, I know how you feel. I felt the same way. But what I have found is that Shakeology curbs my cravings. And what I have found is that because I have access to all these meal plans, I'm saving money at the grocery store to it, it, for me to be able to pay for Shakeology. What I have found is that Shakeology is only $3.50 a, a serving, and that's what I would spend anyway on a meal. So like, try to combat their objection in, in terms of how you feel. Don't be like, girl, no, it's not. You can totally do this. Well, like, obviously we wouldn't say that, but we all know that we want to sometimes. So keep this in mind when you handle objections and it could be any objection, you guys. 
Okay, so the cycle of success. You have the potential, you acted on it, you got results, and now you believe, okay? Cycle through that success. Believe you can and you will. You are the only one that determines your success. Remember that. Don't compare yourself to others, okay? This is a big one, okay? Don't compare yourself to me. Don't compare yourself to Nicolette. Don't compare yourself to Stephanie Malkey, to Javen. Don't compare yourself, you guys. You are your own person, your own coach. Everybody starts differently. Everybody has a different journey. Everybody has a different story. Everybody has a different background. And everybody's going to attract different types of people, okay? So, like, I wouldn't attract some 50-year-old male that wants to gain muscle. Like, I wouldn't know what to do with him. I wouldn't – I don't want that. I want to attract people – that I'm going to be best friends with for a lifetime because if they're going to be on my team, I want to connect with them in a deeper level. I want to be able to be relatable and be able to relate with them. Okay. So do not compare yourself to others. Don't compare to yourself to, Oh my gosh, she just hit diamond and I'm still at Emerald. And I just, I don't think this is for me. Like that is just self doubt all over the place. You cannot let that hold you back from achieving the dreams that you have when you first started coaching, okay? We all had dreams when we first signed up. I still have dreams. I'm getting there, it's slow, but we're getting there, you guys. It's not fast, and that's okay, it's a journey. So keep that in mind, don't compare yourself to others, okay? Stop following and imitating other coaches. I kind of already touched on this. Find your vibe as a coach. There's only one you, so be yourself, okay? Um, and that's really all I had to talk about tonight, you guys. I hope this helped. I am not sure it did, but I really think that if we just, if we just find our, like I said, find your, find your vibe, find your vibe in this business. If you, and what I like to think about too is, you know, your ideal coach or customer, you know, what kind of thoughts did you have before signing up as a coach? Did you think Shakeology was too expensive? Did you think that, um, you know, that you weren't going to be successful or you had doubts or whatever? then create your posts uh, geared towards that. Create like a Shakeology post that talks about the benefits and how awesome it is and all this stuff and, and stump those, stump those um, objections right in a post. You know what I mean? So think about when you're doing posts. Think about when you're doing your stories. Who are you wanting to watch them? Who are you wanting to get to believe in this business and believe in you? So, okay, guys. That is all I had to talk about tonight. I hope it was helpful. Javen, did you have anything to say? Or any have have anybody have anybody any questions? <laughs> that was awesome. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. But I know you're awesome, so it's just that's oh, what I expect. <laughs> I'm over here sweating and pumped up. Seriously. <laughs> Gets me all fired up too. Right, right. And, you know, just to add one little thing too, like, you and I now, like, we, yeah, you, you might look at us and think we're successful, but Jen and I, you know, talk about all the time how we now find success and how we level my success and Jenna's success is by you all being successful. That's what we want for you all and for your family. And now we're not going to think we're successful until we start having our own coaches find success and true happiness in this business and true passion. So, um, you know, that's why we pour our hearts into these team calls. That's why we love you all so much. Um, we want you all to be successful and to find the success that we have. And it's all through consistency. <laughs> if there's one word I would ever preach, it's consistency. It's the only word. Yeah. Whatever you're doing, be consistent in it. Yeah. And I have struggled these last two days with posting just for life reasons. But, you know, and I'm going to type up a post and just talk about, you know, I'm still here. I just needed a little brain break and you know I'm coming back at it full force so just remember be consistent show up every single day 
Yeah. And you guys remember it's okay to unplug too. You know, like some, there's some days where I just have to put my phone away. I just have to shut my computer off. I just have to not message anybody that day and just completely like refocus my mind, refocus my why, refocus my energy into my business because, you know, it's easy to get burnt out. Um, you know, so don't feel guilty about, oh, I didn't post today. Oh my gosh, I'm failing. Like, you know, you have to just listen to yourself and um, you'll be fine. But so when we say consistency, don't feel like you have to be on it all the time, you know, but just, um, yeah, just keep your goals in mind. Your goals are our goals. That's why we had the goals talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, you guys. Well, if you don't have any questions or anything you want to discuss right now, I guess I'll let you guys know. I know it's kind of late there, wherever everybody is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm exhausted. Yeah. Thanks for doing that. You did great. Yeah. No problem, you guys. I recorded it, so I will definitely be posting it in our thread, and it'll be on my YouTube channel. So, all right, you guys. I will see you later. Thanks for coming on. Bye. Okay, bye.